good evening, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, The Holy Spirit, Lord and Giver of Life. My name is John Bully. I work in the Christian Outreach Office at the Francis University of Steubenville. I'm wearing proudly my T-shirt. This is my alma mater. This is where I work. I love working here because it is such a place where the Holy Spirit is alive, and it's a lot of pleasure to be able to host this tonight, this webinar, so that you can grow, hopefully, in a deeper knowledge and love for the Holy Spirit and how He wants to work in your life. Uh, these webinars are part of our ongoing engagement. We just want to be able to serve people. We want to be able to help them on their journey, not just through our conference outreach, but every week of the year. 300, you know, 52 weeks in a year, we want to be with you and let you know that, that we care about you and we want to help you grow. And these webinars are a, a big part of it. To start us off, I'd just like to start with a prayer and ask the Lord's Spirit, even as we start a webinar on the Holy Spirit, to fall fresh on everyone who is with us, everyone who wanted to be here tonight and couldn't be here, uh, that, that we would not just embrace the Holy Spirit as a concept or as a good thought, but as our Lord and the giver of life to our own souls. So let us pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, in the fulfillment of your mission, you sent forth your spirit to work within our hearts, to transform us, to make us into your image and likeness. And it is through the Holy Spirit that we have made, been made adopted sons of our, our Heavenly Father and are able to cry out with great passion and love, Abba, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, in so many ways for uh, the way that you've made yourself known to us, and we just seek you in a deeper way tonight to work in our hearts in a new and powerful way. Lord, I thank you for David and DJ who joined us here as part of the panel. Uh, we thank you uh, for everyone who's come on board tonight. Bless this webinar, may it be for your glory and for the sanctif sanctification of all of our souls. And we ask this in your most precious name, Jesus. Amen. Father, Amen. 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 Now, those of you who are tuning in, you're looking at your screen saying, I see two. Where's, I see David, I see John. Where's DJ? Well, we have a little bit of technical glitch. So DJ is here in uh, vocally. Say hi, DJ. Hey, hey, hey. All right, he's here. And when it's his turn to share, I'm actually going to put a, a very, a very uh, muy suave picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, just. Muy guapo, muy guapo. <laughs> um, me, not so guapo, but um, anyway, tonight our topic is the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of Life. And, you know, that's one of the most ancient uh, and, and profound titles given to uh, one that's been affirmed since one of the earliest councils of the church, even embedded permanently into the creed that we all pray together at Mass on Sunday. And why? Because he is part of the Trinitarian God. The, the beauty of what we are as Catholics are, is we're family. And this family was established by a God who didn't uh, exist as a singularity by himself out in heaven, but it exists as a community, as a family of love. And it's in this giving between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that this family of love becomes just this world with this beautiful community that we are invited into through baptism. And yet, you know, it is all of our uh, call to uh, to kind of step into that, to enter into that that life of the Trinity, and the Holy Spirit really is the one in so many ways that makes uh, makes us able to do that and gives us access to this deeper, more mysterious, more beautiful life of God that makes the Catholic life so exciting and so enriching and so wonderful. Now we're going to take turns sharing, and in a few minutes, David's going to share, and the DJ's going to uh, share, and then I'm going to kind of wrap up and say a few things. But you'll notice on your GoToWebinar control panel that on the side there, you're able to, uh, under a, a box called Questions, type in any questions or comments that you would like to share with us as a panel along the way, and we will take time. Uh, as we go along, if the questions are clarif clarifying questions, to stop and, and, and deal with your questions and be able to, to help, you know, you know, help you understand what we're talking about, so deal with the questions you have. And we'll also have a good block of time at the end of this webinar where we're going to have like a free-for-all where we'll have you know, a, a large chunk of time just to answer your questions. So once again, that's on your GoToWebinar control panel. Just type your questions uh, in and hit enter, and it'll pop up on our screens. And as, as we uh, have uh, the opportunity, we'll be glad to address and deal with those, uh, those questions. So thank you once again for being here. Um, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, get started. And I want to encourage you, if you're out there like, oh man, I want to take notes, and I want to, you know, I want to catch every little thing that's said. 
I want to assure you that this webinar is being recorded, and that's one of the cool things about this technology. We're recording it so that you can listen to it later again, or you can share it with uh, another group or other people that you feel might benefit from listening to the content. So, you know, just relax, make yourself present, open your hearts to the Spirit, and let them just take you uh, through this time together, and we'll have a great time. So, um, with that, I want to turn it over to uh, David, and David is going to uh, tell us your way. His experience was in his heart in regard to what he sees the Holy Spirit have done and is doing through him in him and the church around him. David, take away, brother. Awesome. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, I'm super excited to be talking about this, this topic on the Holy Spirit. Um, if you've been going to Mass uh, regularly, you probably notice that we're hearing a lot about the Holy Spirit, or at least the early church in the book of Acts. And we're kind of leading up to this huge Pentecost Sunday, um, which, which is going to be phenomenal. And, and I love especially these readings right now because they show us the book of Acts. And the book of Acts sometimes is referred to as uh, the gospel of the Holy Spirit, that when Jesus comes and, you know, he goes through his, his passion, his death, and his, re his resurrection, but he didn't just leave us. He didn't just say, all right, end of story, see you later. He established a church to carry on that mission and that message of his death and his resurrection. And so he started the church through the, uh, the apostles, and you see that starting to take shape in the gospels. And the book of Acts is kind of that transition as Jesus begins to hand over this church to his apostles, to his disciples, to his people. But he does it in such a cool way. He actually gives them this mission, but then he empowers them to do it. And you find this in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is actually, our church would say it's historically accurate. Now, that's not just like spiritually edifying, or it's not like some sort of um, religious just story or like kind of a, an analogy or something. This is important to think about because it's historically accurate. It means that what you find in the book of Acts in Scripture actually happened. And you may be thinking, like, big deal. Well, that's because maybe you're not too familiar with the book of Acts. Take a minute when you each night before you go to bed or something for the next couple of weeks and just read a little bit of the book of Acts, and you're going to see our church. It's the, it's the beginnings of the Catholic Church. It's the blueprint to Catholicism. And you're going to see normal human beings like you and I like the people that take up our pews on any given Sunday at Mass, and you're going to see the crazy life that they lived. And we call this life the life in the Spirit. They did things that Jesus had empowered them to do, things they could never do on their own, things that only a supernatural power could do in and through them. And we see this happen at Pentecost. Jesus promises them, you will receive power when my Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses unto the ends of the earth. And I think um, if you're anything like me, like you're probably maybe raised Catholic or you hear the word Holy Spirit or this term a lot. And the reality is for me, the Holy Spirit was just this kind of dove, right? This kind of like weird, like pet of Jesus or something. We kept him in a cage and he chirped out some great verses every now and then, but we weren't really sure who he was. But that's not it. Like, like this verse where he says, you receive power when my Holy Spirit comes upon you. That word power comes from a Greek word, dynamis. And this is where we actually get the word dynamite. Think about that real quick. This is the description Jesus is using to describe to us the power of his Holy Spirit, of his love dwelling in us. That it's this life-changing power. You think about dynamite. I mean, dynamite blasts open mountains so they can pave, pave roads through these mountains. Dynamite can be beautifully destructive in a lot of ways. And in the same way this power we've been given in the early church, you see it start to change who they are. You see Peter go from this, this doubter and this denier into the rock, St. Peter, that we know him to be. You see St. Paul go from this, this man who persecutes Christians to be turned into one of the greatest evangelists the world will ever see. And he wrote, I mean, part of the New Testament. The only power that could destroy that old person and bring about a new person is the Holy Spirit. And it's in the book of Acts. It's in who we're supposed to be as Catholics. And not only are we baptized, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but we're called to have an awakening to the Holy Spirit, a baptism of the Holy Spirit, that we would be empowered, that we would be receptive to the gifts and the plans that God, the Holy Spirit, wants to do and bring about in our lives. And when I read the book of Acts, I get really excited. But if I'm honest, I look around at my church, some of the churches I get to, to visit, uh, and I don't really see the same church that I see in the book of Acts. I don't really see people courageously praying for healings. I don't really see people interceding prophetically for people. I don't see people trusting in the Holy Spirit in the way they did in the book of Acts. But I can't stop there, because if I'm really honest, 
I don't really see it in the church more so. I don't see it really in my life a lot. I really want to see it, though. And I think this is where God kind of has me right now. He shows me the beauty of his Holy Spirit in the early church. And I see it in some of the amazing people I meet when I get to travel around. And I believe he's stirring up this desire in my heart for a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't mean that that outpouring is going to look like St. Peter or look like St. Paul, but it's going to look like what he has planned for me. And I believe right now for this season, as we're preparing for Pentecost as a church, but also in my own heart, I believe Jesus is stirring up a desire for his Holy Spirit in me, a desire to know him, not just the gifts, but to know him as a person, to want to long for him as a person dwelling in me. And I think this is really important because because as I was kind of thinking about this, St. Paul talks about how we should, we should be striving for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We should be striving for the Holy Spirit, for his presence, for his love. In 1 Corinthians, he calls us, he encourages us to eagerly seek this out through prayer and different things along those means. In my own life, I notice that this desire kind of creates an emptiness. Not, not a bad emptiness, but a hopeful emptiness. Because a glass is empty, it can be filled. And I think that's what God is doing in my own life right now. As I see the book of Acts, and I look around, and I see maybe some dis, um, discrepancies within my own life in terms of a life in the Spirit. I see he's awakening a, a, a holy desire. And where there's a desire, there's a longing. And where there's longing, Jesus can come and feel that longing. I think he's making room for his providence by leading me to desire more of the Holy Spirit. I believe for all of us, in some way or another, if we stop and think about it, there's things in our life maybe that we want to see change. Maybe there's a sin that we're struggling with. Or maybe there's kind of just a cloud of maybe depression or darkness or something that we feel kind of in our lives. Maybe we can't really seem to grasp this idea of God's love for us. All these things are actually desires for the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit wants to bring you joy and unconditional love. He wants you to know who He is. And I think for us, if we're willing to, God's going to show us that he's stirring us up, stirring that desire up. And he, he plans to fulfill that desire as we turn to him in prayer. <clears throat> I think what's important, though, in my own life, I've, God's kind of been taking me on this journey, and as I've been praying about this desire for the Holy Spirit, for myself, and a renewal for our church, he keeps taking me back to this verse that I found um, in, in, the, in the Gospel of uh, it's Luke. And it's gospel, it's Luke chapter 11, verse, it starts at verse 9, and it goes uh, through verse 13. I'm going to read it real quickly to you. I'm sure you've heard it before, but let's hear it again. Jesus says, uh, and I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and the one who seeks, finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asked for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asked for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And I love this because Jesus uses some, some language here that for me is kind of like, duh. Right, right. What, what dad among you, if your son asked for a fish, would give him a snake? Like, that's a pretty awful dad. You know what I mean? Like, thankfully, like, I never had experience with a dad like that. My dad gave me fish whenever I wanted fish, right? When I asked for an egg, he didn't give me a scorpion. And it kind of seems like this dumb moment. Like, what dad would do that? And Jesus is saying exactly, like, I want you to get this simply and plainly, that my Father in heaven, your Father in heaven, wants to give you good gifts. And if you think, if it makes sense to you that a father would give good gifts to his child, how much more would this good father in heaven give good, give good gifts to you, his children? And he says, and he'll give the Holy Spirit to those of you who ask. And I love this, this, this verse, these verses. What blew me away, as I've been kind of reading these verses these past couple weeks, is I read the verse right before this section. And it's actually Luke chapter 11, verse 5 through 8. And this took my understanding of Jesus telling me to ask for the Holy Spirit to a whole different level. And he gives this little story and he says, suppose one of you has a friend who, who goes at midnight and says, friend, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for another friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. 
I tell you, if he does not get up to give you the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. Take a look at this image. Jesus is teaching us how he wants us to pray. And he gives us this analogy of this annoying neighbor in the middle of the night who comes banging on your door and your family's asleep. Your door back then, it had to be like, like physically locked up each night. It wasn't just like a deadbolt. It took time to secure that door and to seal it each night. And Jesus is saying, your neighbor comes to your door and is demanding for you to open up how much work it would take for you to come downstairs to wake your family up to open that door just to give them a loaf of bread. And he says, I can't do it. My, my, the door's been locked. My family's asleep. And Jesus says, if he doesn't get up to answer, to give him that loaves out of the friendship, he will do it because that neighbor will be persistent in asking. The neighbor's going to keep knocking. The neighbor's going to keep calling out, keep demanding for that gift of that loaf so he can have it in his own life. And this is what Jesus uses to preface, ask, seek, and knock. To the point of what you and I would think would be annoying. He says, do you want the Holy Spirit? Ask for it. Do you seek wisdom? Ask for it. Do you want to know more of my love living in you? Knock and seek and ask for it. And for me, this is incredibly hopeful. This is a desire that he's awakening. I've prayed for more and more of the Holy Spirit a lot. And I may not have felt this crazy rush or seen the book of Acts unfold in front of me every time. But every time God is awakening my thirst and desire for him more and more. He's teaching me to be persistent and to ask this good father for the good gift of his Holy Spirit. And so I encourage you. Wherever you are in life, what desires do you have? Where in your life do you want to see something change, something renewed, something made new? And ask the Holy Spirit to come in and to be persistent, to give you himself. Ask the Father to give those good gifts. And lastly, I want to leave you with this one thought. Father Renero Cantalamesa, he's the preacher of the, the papal household. In other words, he, this is the guy, his job is to preach to the Pope. Like that's a pretty big job. Like, he's, he's got to know his stuff. He's got to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. This is his role. And Father Consul Mesa says, we should not be content with anything less than to experience a new Pentecost. We should not be content with anything less than to experience a new Pentecost. We shouldn't be content with just seeing the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. We shouldn't be content with just hearing about the Holy Spirit in the lives of the saints. We shouldn't be content with that one time on retreat four years ago when I think I experienced the Holy Spirit. He says we always have to be persistent in pursuing a new Pentecost and begging God to send the promise, the advocate, every single moment of every single day as we pursue him. And he's a faithful father and he will do it. He may not do it how you want him to do it, but he will do it in the best way possible. And he will give himself to you the best gift that he can present in that Holy Spirit living within you. Think about it, pray about it, and pray for me as, as I, like you, are just journeying and thirsting for more of the Holy Spirit in my own life. Amen. Dude, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm drawn back to the words of Pope Benedict XVI. Again, this was in 2008 at Pentecost Sunday. He said, look, the church, as it were, is in a constant state of Pentecost. We're constantly seeking new outpourings, new effusions of the Holy Spirit into the life of the church. And he said, I, I want to invite all Catholics today to come to rediscover the joy of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, to, 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 to be renewed in the graces that come to us in baptism and confirmation. And, uh, you know, a couple of the questions that have popped up, you know, like how do we become more open to the Holy Spirit? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch upon a, a little bit of that when we get to my point. You know, and, and so these answers are coming. Um, you know, we're going to deal with all the other questions that have popped up, and I want to encourage you guys if you have questions along the way. Because here's the thing. If you look at the Old Testament, the same Acts of the Apostles <laughs> to that, that David referenced, you know, at one point it talks about uh, Paul going into this place and preaching the gospel. And he says, have you guys been baptized? And they're, yes, we've been baptized with the baptism of John. And he asked them, well, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they all look at each other like, we've never even heard the Holy Spirit. So even in the uh, Acts of the Apostles, the church had a catechetic problem. A problem. They, they, we didn't teach well about the Holy Spirit. It's kind of a funny anecdote that the church even had to learn, like, we need to teach people about the fullness of what it means to be alive. 
The fact that our God is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you know, and they share this life, and we can't have the fullness of God's life within us until we are fully alive in the Holy Spirit. And, you know, for me, when I when I went through that, my journey opened up a whole bunch of more doors and deepened my relationship with Christ and with God the Father because I was now being brought into that in a deep way through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'll talk more about that, but I want to pass it on right now. And I want to bring up a, a lovely, like I said, I promised you a, a great picture here that you can meditate on while he speaks. And it's going to be awesome for all of us involved. I'm going to share my screen so you should to be able to see on your screen what I see, which is the one uh, DJ Zoolander himself, DJ Bernal. DJ, take it away, bro. That's a good photo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Photoshop is amazing these days, I'll tell you. They can do whatever they want. That's <laughs> okay. I don't want to There you go. Real deal. So we're just hiding uh, in the background. Go for it, bro. Well, thank you. And first and foremost, you know, thank you, uh, John. Thank you, David. And thank you to the student bill for being, you know, Franciscan University for doing this. This is just an amazing, wonderful opportunity. And man, I just got to start off and say we serve a mighty God, a mighty, mighty, merciful God. And it's so amazing that he would choose you and I and all the, the, the people listening in to be to be in his army. Man, what, what, what a privilege that is. What a trust that he put within our hearts when he made us those years ago before the world was even formed when he said, I will count the hairs on your head. What a beautiful, amazing purpose he has put in our path. And, uh, and I'll tell you, you, you know, kind of just like David was talking about, uh, you know, growing up and, and the church that I was in, I was in a very mellow church, you know, <laughs> And so being on this conference call about, uh, or this webinar about the Holy Spirit is totally new. But I'll tell you what, whenever uh, I had a reversion, I, I've been Catholic my whole life, but I just fell in love with the Lord in college. I found out that the Lord's love is anything but mellow. It is amazing. It is miraculous in what he does to hearts. And I'll tell you, over the past couple of years, he's absolutely changed my life through the Holy Spirit. And, and, and it's like, it's like when you're walking in the Holy Spirit, the world around you changes. And it's not because the situations change. It's because the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life through you changes everything that's going on around you. You know, our, our world is facing a dilemma of darkness. And the only way for the Lord to eliminate the shadows is to raise up Holy Spirit and evangelizers whose light never fades. If we're called to be a city on a hill and that, that our lamp should light up the world, that's exactly what we are to do. And we are able to do that. And, 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 and it's, it, it, we're able to, to wake up in the Holy Spirit, to go to sleep in the Holy Spirit, to, to walk in the Holy Spirit every day. Why? Because of what David just talked about, Acts uh, chapter 1, is we've been given power through the spirit of adoption. I'm going to read Acts 1, uh, 8 through 11. And once again, uh, David already touched on this. I think it's so beautiful. It says, uh, so when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Brothers and sisters, that's what we've been called to do. And we can do it because we now have the power. John 14 says the Holy Spirit already lives inside of us, that we are not orphaned. Wow, what a beautiful inheritance that we have received. We've, been, we've received the inheritance of a king. And he's kind of laid out this path before us and said, hey, go to the end of the ends of the earth and preach the good news. Brothers and sisters, this is the legacy that we share in. What a beautiful opportunity. You, you know, we, we have to, as Holy Spirit and evangelizers, whether it be in, in, in your Sunday school, whether it be in your work, whether it be in your schools, we have to be tired. We have to be fed up with people perishing for the lack of knowledge. 
I mean, you, you can go to anywhere. You go to school, work, uh, especially on college campuses for young adults. Everyone's on their phones, and, and we're living in a community that needs life. And that's what this Holy Spirit does. It gives life. It doesn't necessarily make bad people good. It brings dead people to life. And that is beautiful. And so um, just offering the challenges, and this is kind of the way that I used to, to wake up, and I said, okay, Lord, today, I got it, Lord. Okay, I got you, Lord. I, I'm ready, baby. I'm going to evangelize to five people today. And oh man, I was content. I had the biggest smile on my face. Woo, I was ready to go. Until the Lord spoke to me and said, DJ, you're limiting yourself to five people a day? What if you walked so in love with me every day of your life that the situations around you change? That, 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 that things just don't happen by coincidence anymore. It's God incidents. And if you have enough confidence in me, then you have a Godfidence. What if you had that? And I said, Jesus, I like that. I like Godfidence. I'm going to use that. Um, I remember a story. This kind of just brings this kind of uh, a story into it. I was walking to Macy's one day, and I was wearing this bright pink shirt. I mean, this thing is bright. I mean, someone, someone, this shirt came with batteries, all right? It illuminates the darkness for sure. So uh, I'm walking into Macy's, and uh, some guy screams at me from the curb. He's, uh, it looked like he, he had put somebody in the back seat, and the door is open. He's closing his trunk. He says, hey! And, and it's kind of windy, and I, and I turned back. I said, uh, yeah, well, what's going on? He says, hey, man, that's a pretty pink shirt. <laughs> And I really had no idea how to take that. I was like, I don't know if this guy wants to fight me. I don't know if he you know, likes to show it. What, what's the deal? So I walk over there and I said, hey, I'm sorry. I, I heard you correctly. You know what? Because you man, you get a pretty pink shirt. And I said, hey, you know what, man? God bless you. That's amazing. I, I appreciate that, that you can compliment like that. And he says, oh, oh, you, you, you know, you're, you're a Christian? I said, absolutely. I'm a Catholic Christian. He says, oh, man, he goes, I'm a Christian, too. He goes, what's your name? I said, my name's Daniel. He goes, oh, my gosh, and an Old Testament name. He says, oh, my name's Joshua. And, and so we started going back to his forth. Well, his mama, and this gentleman has to be, you know, 40 years old. Well, his mama, he had just put her in the back seat, and she's going, What's, what did you say, Sonny? He's a Christian, man. And so all of a sudden, we're all laughing together. And, we're, and you know what? We said a prayer right there. I mean, right there, right outside of Macy's. And, and why? Because I said, God bless you? I mean, he didn't even sneeze. <laughs> but it's when we, as Christian people, as Catholic people, we're so in love with, with Jesus that the Holy Spirit uses every word to minister. The, the word says, be of every word that comes off of your lips a blessing to people. And when we allow the Holy Spirit to bless people, now that's absolutely amazing. I mean, just to think about this, if we have the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead stirring inside of us, what a difference we can make in this world. What a shining light we can be. There's this beautiful idea of a lighthouse. And, and, and you think about the lighthouse on, on, on the beach, on the bayfront, and what's the meaning of the lighthouse? It, you know, there's so many rock around the bay that, that ships can't come close. They, they can't come and dock there. That lighthouse is showing the way, saying, hey, if you, if you keep going the same way that you're going, you're going to hit rocks and you're going to perish. And my brothers and sisters, people perish for the lack of knowledge. So you and I are called to be the lighthouse. We're called to say, hey, the rocky shores that you're going through, you're going to hit rock bottom unless you decide to love Jesus. Unless you decide to let him transform life. You know, and, and I talk about this very, like it's very easily, easily done. And, it, and it's not. And, and I don't pretend that it is to, to muster up the courage 
you know, standing in, in front of someone at Walmart and telling them, hey, you know what, I, I really feel that the Holy Spirit is asking me to pay for your groceries today and to feel like maybe a social reject. These are very real uh, uh, things to us. But brothers and sisters, we don't, we, just because we live in the world does not mean we are of this world. We live for someone better. We don't live for the applause of this world. We live for the approval of our Heavenly Father. And when people don't know what a good father is, you and I need to be in the White House to show them what does that Heavenly Father mean. So, so when you're at the store and you say to someone, or you're at the work and you say at work and you say, hey, let me pray for you, and they say, Oh, I, I don't I don't do that type of thing. Hey, that's okay. I do. I know that God loves you anyway. So I'm gonna say a prayer for you. You know, um, it reminds me of a story. I like I said, I, I don't pretend uh, to be something that I'm not. I'm scared every day whenever I, I, I look at someone and, and God puts it on, on on my heart to pray for them. Um or even and talk to somebody I know. And I'll, I'll give you a, a, a part where I failed at that. Um, so friends and I had gone camping in Big Bend National Park here in uh, Texas. It's about a, um, an eight-hour drive, I think it is. And we end up getting there, and, and we go on this amazing hike, and, and I'm with these friends of mine, and we get to the, the, the summit of the of the rock, and we get up there, and then we're tired and, and famished and thirsty, and and so we're, we're breaking out our little peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and, and there's a guy right next to us, and he's sitting on a rock, and, and he's a, you know, a Native American looking, he had very long hair, uh, darker skin, um, and he had, you know, the, this, this, this uh, blue jeans on, and very, you know, looking very rugged, ready to kind of take on the world. And, and we start talking to him, and, and he talks about, you know, he loves camping, he loves going here and there. And as we're breaking out, our, we're saying, yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. We're breaking out our sandwiches and stuff. And we were getting ready to pay for our sandwiches. And uh, we asked him, hey, do you want one of the sandwiches? He said, yeah, yeah, I would love that. Thank you. And just as we were about to pray for the food, the Holy Spirit, I felt, told me, DJ, invite that man to come pray. And, 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 and I'm going in my head, well, uh, uh, uh and then we started praying. Someone in our group started praying. And before I knew it, prayer, we were, we were done with our prayer. And so I gave the guy the sandwich. And I thought to myself, wow, I can, I can feed this guy naturally, but I can't even try to feed him spiritually. And, 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 and I told God every day, Lord, you know, Lord Jesus Christ, put me up to bat, man. Put me up to bat. I, I'm, I'm ready to go. You know, I'm ready to sit on the bench. Put me in the game, Lord. I'm ready to be your servant. And you know what he gave me? Man, he gave me a rob. And I didn't even swing at it. And the whole way back from Big Ben National Park, I, was, I had let down the Holy Spirit. I forgot to said, Shoot. The Holy Spirit told me, and I didn't listen. Another funny story, we have to kind of do this when, when, when the Holy Spirit tells us, because we might only have a, a small window of opportunity. And, and I'll give you another story. We were at, uh, I was at church one day, and there's this uh, lady, and she, she was a young lady in her 20s, maybe, and two young kids. And it reminded me so much of my family. And, and uh, my mom and my brother and myself, and I wanted to tell her, hey, you have a beautiful family. And, and I heard, oh, you know, maybe I should tell him that the Holy Spirit, and, and I mean, I wasn't hitting on the girl, right? You know, the Holy Spirit is telling me to do it. And so um, the perfect opportunity happened during give the peace, right? And share your peace. And I, and I, and I, 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 again, you know, I whiffed. I didn't even swing. I didn't even say, hey, the Lord just told me, yeah, look, beautiful family. He has a, a, an amazing plan for you. He has plans to prosper you, and I just want to tell you the beautiful family. Well, I didn't do it. But I saw them leave church, and I said, oh, I know. I'm going to follow them. <laughs> what a stalker, right? So they end up, uh, I end up following them, two cars behind, right? We get that traffic. Well, they point to a Jamba Juice over here, right? And so they go into the Jamba Juice, and I park my car, and I'm saying, all right, here we go, Holy Spirit. One opportunity. <laughs> So I go into Jamba Juice, and they're ordering, and the little girl, 
the little girl, one of the, she's maybe a couple years old, she looks at me and she has this look of fear, like just death on her. <laughs> she is so scared. And so she recognizes me, so she pulls her mom's pat legs, and uh, her mom turns around and just grabs her children, right? And she looks frightened. And I said, oh, I, I just wanted to let you, I was, you know, I was behind you at church, and, and I just want to let you know you have a beautiful family. <laughs> and she looks at me and says, uh, oh, okay. And she kind of gave me this look of, man, you are such a weirdo, get away from us. And I saw that my window of opportunity has, uh, has had closed on me. So we need to pay attention and, and, and be ready and willing to when the Holy Spirit tells us to act on it. And one of the last stories I'll give here, and I'll start winding down, is I saw this gentleman uh, across the street, and he'd been working, uh, he worked for Home Depot, you know, home uh, lumber yard, and, and to fix up your house in case anybody doesn't know what Home Depot is. But uh, he was, and he looked into my garage, and I, and I was uh, had some weights in the garage. And he comes over, and he's a, he's a this very strong, bulky-looking uh, gentleman. And he says, "Hey, man, you know, I like to work out too." I said, "Dude, that's awesome, man. That, that's great." And he's talking about the different things that are going on in his life. And I said, "Hey, man, have you ever thought you're meant to do something amazing?" And he says, "Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm in sales, and and, and I love people." And I love doing this, and I've sold, you know, I hear at Home Depot, and I've sold, I've been in retail. He goes, man, I'm a good salesman. And I looked at him, and I said, man, have you ever sold hope? And he stopped in his tracks, and he gave me this look, and, and he said, what did you say? I said, have you ever sold hope? And he said, no. Hey, what do you, and I said, man, let me tell you what Jesus Christ has done for me. And it wasn't, I, I didn't have to force it. I, I, I didn't have to, to try to, 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 to use the most simple, to use the most intricate phrases. I didn't even need to be the most eloquent speaker, you know, like, like Moses was the most eloquent speaker. But I just shared my heart with him and I said, hey man, I think God wants to make, wants to make a minister out of you. And, and I'll tell you what, it, he and I parted ways. I gave him my number and I, I haven't seen any fruit from that. But it's not my job to see the fruit that comes with that. My job is to plant the seed. And that was my little win. Consider this, brothers and sisters. You may encounter someone at Walmart and change a generational line through the Holy Spirit. Let me unpack that real quick. Because you tell someone at Walmart one day, hey, you know what? Jesus is in love with you. Or you pray with somebody at work one day. Maybe their children's 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 children are so impacted because you prayed with their great 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 grandpa that you know what that great 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 grandpa he became a big part of the church and, and he went to Acts retreats and he became a faithful member member and so his grand 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 grandson becomes the next pope. I mean I, I don't I never thought about that. Maybe the person that I'm standing in line at, at the grocery store is the next Mother Teresa. But unless we act with the Holy Spirit, unless we use that power that the Lord has given to us, people will continue to perish. The Lord has asked us Please be my representative. You may be the only Jesus anybody ever sees. Be not scared. Be not moved. As a, as a, as a matter of fact, tell the mountain to move and it will be moved. If you just have the faith of the mustard seed. Women, oh my gosh, women, you just celebrated Mother's Day. Even if you're not a mother, what life you can bring to somebody's world if you just listen to the Holy Spirit. Man, it, it, it's, it's like we as men aren't allowed to, to, be, to be in love with Jesus because that, that's a, a girl thing or something. Man, that's totally off, off balance because the most masculine I know, man I know got up on that cross and died for his people. So we as men can be that in love with Jesus.
And I love what First Peter 4 says, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. That is beautiful. And I'm going to wrap up with this right here. Even if you are single, maybe you don't have a family, maybe you're in school, maybe you're just listening right now, maybe uh, you've gone through your life and maybe you still haven't found the right one, maybe you're still considering your vocation. I love what this says. No matter how old or how young you are. 2 Corinthians 3. Who has made us competent to be ministers of the new covenant? Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Brothers and sisters, my prayer for you and my deep desire of my heart is to see you walk in power, to change life as the young church did. And all the power and all of heaven will be with you because the Holy Spirit is already living inside of you. God bless you. God bless you. And we serve a merciful and wonderful God. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I appreciate that. Uh, I, love, I love your passion and the joy that you get. And I think, you know, the takeaway uh, through all that that DJ was able to share is like, when we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and give him the freedom to guide us where he needs us to go, he's going to lead us to places where we're going to be uh, on the cutting edge of, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Trinity, uh, his life, and, and doing the work that, that, that God wants to do, which is making his love known to this world. I mean, people are literally, literally dying to know Jesus and his love, and it's the Holy Spirit that gives us the ability to communicate that. So I wanted to, um, before I kind of get into a little bit, you know, I wanted to really talk a little bit about, you know, some of the questions that people, um, you know, have, have brought up. You know, uh, <clears throat> one of the person, you know, said, how can I be more open to the Holy Spirit? Uh, one of the person said, why do people say that confirmation is the completion of the Holy Spirit and baptism, from baptism, and what is baptism in the Holy Spirit? Um, you know, is it important to distinguish between when you feel God versus the Holy Spirit? Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, let me kind of just say a few things uh, as to how this works, you know, and, and, and this is based on my experience, plus what, what's in the catechism, which is just the goal line of teaching on the Holy Spirit, plus, uh, you know, what David is sharing, and, you know, I want to recommend a book, you know, as part of this webinar, which is a book by Father Renero Confirmation called Sober Intoxication in the Holy Spirit. Well, I think this book is brilliant in terms of outlining what it means to be alive in the Holy Spirit. You know, you know first of all, you know, we have, uh, you know, the Holy, the, the, our God exists in this Trinity. And we are invited into this life. And like I said before, it is, it is a family. You have three distinct beings. And I've heard it described by Dr. Scott Hahn that, you know, the Father gives all that he is to his Son out of love, and all, that, all that's in the love in his heart, he freely gives um, to, to the Son. And the Son, in return, gives everything that he has out of love to his Father. He empties himself out of love. And it's this exchange, this mutual exchange of love that becomes like this whirlwind, a palpable whirlwind. And it is this whirlwind that manifests the third person of the Trinity. You know, he's called the Spirit of Love because he, this love is so powerful that you have to give it a name. And the only analogy I can liken it to is, is, is the, the marriage between a, a, a man and a wife. You know, and this is so key because uh, right before we got on with the uh, webinar, David Calavita's wife is, is expecting their first child, which is just glorious news. But when a husband and wife give themselves to each other completely and without any barrier of restriction in love, that love becomes so real and palpable that nine months later they've got to give that love a name. And in the same way, the Father and Son in love, this exchange of love was so powerful that they gave it a name and he called it the Holy Spirit. And he goes by many titles, the Counselor, uh, I mean, the Consoler, you know, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Love. But our God is Trinity. It's a mystery, yet it's a, it's a, it's a, 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 a family, you know. I mean, like, I can't explain it because it is mystery. But we, but we're invited through baptism. And somebody said, "Well, why do people say confirmation is the completion of uh, the Holy Spirit from baptism?" And I would say we call these the sacraments of initiation for a reason. 
They're not the completion of anything. In fact, it's kind of like once you go through a baptism and once you go through confirmation, you receive the sacraments of initiation so that you can really enter in now, really start to, to be equipped to lead the serious Catholic life. That, that you have the gifts and the strength from the Holy Spirit that you need in order to live an authentically Catholic life in a world that is dead set against you doing that. Right? The world does not, does not want you to, uh, to live a Catholic life. And God says, come out, be different, be transformed, be conformed to my son, image and likeness of who he is here, and, and, and let your heart overflow with his love. And so, you know, if you think about sacrament, you know, somebody said, well, why is it that most people that we see in our churches and in many places don't seem to have a spirit? And, um, and some people were saying, like, I, even I feel a little bit stuck in the Holy Spirit. Like, I don't know if I'm feeling him as much as I have in the past. And how can we help ourselves and help one another experience more of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Well, you know, the bottom line is, you know, every sacrament that we receive as Catholics has a response that's necessary to that sacrament for the fullness of the sacrament to have its effect. We all know that to receive the sacrament of the Eucharist in a state of mortal sin is a sin. Because we need to, if we're not in communion with God, then we shouldn't be receiving the communion that is offered us at the table of the Eucharist. And so to not be in a state of grace and receive the Eucharist is to, uh, you know, it's to live a lie. It's, it's doing sacramentally what's not a reality in our own hearts. This is why the church says, if you've got serious sin in your heart, go to confession first, because that sin can block the grace that would come to us through that sacrament and actually do harm to us if we're in it, you know, it become more sin. And this is a tough Catholic teaching, but it's one that's central to it. If we're really going to be serious about living the authentic Catholic life, it's not we're going to want to receive the sacraments in the state of grace. And some people would say, well, I never knew that. No one ever taught me that receiving the Eucharist in a state of sin was wrong. And so you can have ignorance as a factor that keeps the grace of Christ from working in your heart. So if we're ignorant of what's happening there, we have never been taught, or if we have sin in our life that blocks, we can go through the motions of receiving sacraments, but the grace that's in those sacraments never really touches our heart. And it's like people who go to confession hoping to feel better, but they don't, they're not really turning from their sin. They're going, hoping to gain a little bit of forgiveness so they don't feel as guilty as they do about the fact that they're not going to stop sinning. If we go to confession, the, 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 the response of our heart needs, needs to be returned from sin. And I say this all to bring it back to confirmation and baptism, the sacraments of initiation. The sacrament of baptism is the most important sacrament you'll ever receive in your life. In fact, if you receive baptism, you have all that you need in terms of grace, sanctifying grace, actual grace, to get you to heaven. You may never receive First Communion, but if you're baptized, you've been given the indwelling of the life of God. His Holy Spirit is in you. And DJ talked about it. The Holy Spirit's already within you. But either through neglect or sin or ignorance, that grace can lie dormant in our souls, unexperienced unrealized, unreleased. And so we have found that, you know, to constantly say, God, stir up that gift of baptism in my life. And that may mean I go to confession, get rid of sin in my life first, so that there's freedom for God to do that. It may mean I need to get right with people in my life so that I'm not being bound by anything, that, that I am free to receive all that God wants to give me. I had this experience when I was 18 where I, I had people pray for me to receive the Holy Spirit. I realized I needed to get to confession. And it was after I went to confession and they prayed with me again that the fullness of God's Spirit was being stirred up in my life. And I say fullness because I was as full as I could be at that time. But I, what I find, find is that as I live like the Holy Spirit, God is constantly expanding my capacity to experience His life and love in my life. There is no limit here. That as we continue to give our hearts to Jesus, as we continue to ask the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, he can transform us and change us. You know, how does this work? Let me just say, you know, the, the word that the, the, the catechism teaches and that a lot of students talked about was learning how to be docile. And docile is one of those words that doesn't come easy to us because we're American. We're not docile. Things. We attack things. We build things. We do whatever 
we, we need to do. And in the spiritual life, it's kind of a paradox. It's like if we really want to move forward with God, we have to be more submissive and receptive than go out and conquer because we're, without the Holy Spirit, there, there's just certain things we're incapable of doing anyway. There's certain things that only the Spirit of God will allow us to do, which is to grow in, in our identity as Catholics and as children of God. That doesn't happen on our own. We need the Holy Spirit to show us that, to teach us that, to lead us through. You know, other thing is like overcoming sin. Well, if we're weak and broken, you know, how are we going to overcome sin unless we have a higher power at work in our hearts and in our souls to help us do that? And so how do we ask the Holy Spirit? How do we stir up that gift? How do we become more filled with the Holy Spirit? I think it starts with the docility. So here's, here's some of the things that I'll just say. On a daily basis, if you want to get the Holy Spirit to come more into your life, and you want to have a more transformative experience of, of, of a deep knowledge, it's important to remember the Old Testament story of the prophet who went to the cave and didn't hear God in the tempest or the wind or the thunder, but heard in the still small voice, the still small breeze that was blowing through the cave. That's when you heard the voice of God. And so if you want to hear God and you want to be more in tune with the Holy Spirit, we need to, to practice the, you know, the, the discipline of, of being quiet and still before the Lord. So I, I encourage you to, 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 to go to prayer, sit with the Lord and just breathe. Just become aware of it. Breathe in, and as you're breathing in, just start saying, come Holy Spirit. You know, St. Bonaventure said, the Holy Spirit goes where he's invited, where he's loved, and where he's expected. And, and, and so many of us, you know, it's like, I don't love the Holy Spirit, and sometimes I don't expect God to do anything in my prayer. And, you know, I sometimes I go through a day and I don't even invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of my day. Well, there you go. The first thing that you need to do is to start off every day inviting the Holy Spirit to come in. Invite the Holy Spirit into your life. He, God is a respecter of our free will. He won't barge into your life and do something against your cooperation. We need to conform not be obliterated in this process of conversion. The Holy Spirit will come to us as the invited guest, and he will do in our hearts whatever we give him permission to do. So if we say, Holy Spirit, come to me, help me become free from this sin or this addiction, and we continue to pray that prayer, like David said, persistently with faith, we are going to see the Holy Spirit bring about victory in our lives. We're going to see sin being overcome. If we say to God, look, I, I have anxiety, I have worries, I have so many things on my heart, Lord, that rob me of my peace, that rob me of sleep. If we're not saying, Holy Spirit, come into my life and be the interior master of my heart because, Holy Spirit, you are stronger than my fears. You are stronger than my anxieties. And I give you permission to squash those to, as, 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 the, as the master of my heart to drive out those things that are of God and give me a new sense of peace. I, I, I want that from you, Holy Spirit. I give you permission. I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will come to you and he will do these things that you desire. And expect it. You know, I mean, part of this living life in the Holy Spirit you know, is, is making an act of faith. Saying with your mind, with an act of your will, Holy Spirit, I make you the interior master of my heart. I want you to be in charge. I want your light to shine upon the path that you want me to walk. Holy Spirit, I want you to enlighten my heart to show me where I need to change. Holy Spirit, I want you to set me on fire where I don't love people the way I need to, or I don't love God the way I need to. Holy Spirit, have your way in me. When we pray this radical prayer of come Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will come. He can't help but rush to us. And that a lot of people have experienced, uh, after being very far away from God and have prayed this prayer, a very dramatic conversion experience in that moment where, there, where once there was emptiness in their life, there's now this presence of God that's overwhelming. And they've experienced the reception of extraordinary gifts in this moment. And for some of us, that might be what happened. But for many of us, it's just going to be experiencing the ongoing, normal uh, you know, presence of God that draws us out of self, puts self to death so that we can live for God. And, you know, we just need to have that trustful surrender and believing that when we say, come Holy Spirit, I give you my life, that he's come. He may not come as a feeling. 
You might not be sitting there like, okay, Holy Spirit, give me a warm fuzzy. You there, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, more cry. I want to feel something. Don't pursue a feeling. Pursue the one who gives the gifts and say, look, I put myself in your hands. Give me what I need, not what I want. Give me what I need to be holy. Give me what I need to be happy. Give me what I need to be loving like Christ is loving. Seek first the kingdom of God and all the other things that you want will be given to you. So seek first God's will and his lordship and the Holy Spirit's interior mastership of your life and all those other things that you desire. They're going to be given to you. Our God is too kind and too generous to leave you orphaned, to leave you hanging, and to leave you empty. He loves you too much to leave you the way you are. You know, that's the beauty about God. He loves us as we are, but he loves us too much to let us stay that way. He wants to change your life. He's waiting for you to invite him in. He's, at, he's waiting for you to continue to, like, you, like David said, be persistent in your prayer. In surrendering your life every day to the power of the Holy Spirit. But we need the interior master. The human heart is a complex mess of feelings, desires, emotions, affections, loves, fears, strengths, doubts. All of this is inside of us. And it's all being ruled by uh, you know, a disordered nature because of original sin. We just have a, a general dysfunction. It doesn't make us bad. You know, sin doesn't make us bad. Sin has the ability to cut off God's likeness. It can make us dead, which is worse than being bad. Because God doesn't look in terms of who is, who's good and who's bad. He wants to know who's alive in my spirit, who's dead, who needs to come alive. Just read, if you don't want to just read the story of the prodigal son one more time. He's saying, my son who is dead is alive, and that's why I rejoice. He wants us to be alive in him. That's the most important thing, is we're alive in God. And if we don't have that interior minister, those things that are disordered in our life will continue to, like a cruel master, drive us towards addictions and sin and lies and selfishness and fear and all the things that cripple us in the walk with God. Whereas the Holy Spirit will lead us into truth and to power and to life and to conversion and to a greater intimacy with God, the Trinity. You know, it says... Um, you know, in the Catechism, in paragraph 260, it says, the ultimate end of the whole divine economy is the entry of God's creatures into the perfect unity of the blessed truth. And, and, and normal persons talk, that means everything that God's done is to bring us into community with him. He wants us to be in community with him, and the Holy Spirit is the one that does that. So if you just take time to surrender, to invite the Holy Spirit in, to be persistent and faithful in your prayer, and just give the Holy Spirit all the permission and room He needs to do what He wants to do in your heart. You will become the dynamic evangelizer and, and the man of boldness, like, like DJ or, or a woman of boldness, like DJ was talking about. We'll experience the same power that, that David talked about that's, that, that's revealed in the, in, the, in the New Testament. And we'll see our own. Um, our own hearts change as we change uh, those around us. Be not afraid. The Holy Spirit is our great friend, our consoler, the one that Christ said, it's better for me to leave the sin for you than me to stick around. And that's a great promise from Jesus himself. So that's all I want to share. I think maybe we can spend the next uh, few minutes together kind of looking at some of your questions. Um, I'll ask you first, David, anything that uh, popped up that uh, you saw in the uh, in the uh, questions that you would want to talk about. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> something that kind of caught my eye were, um, well, first of all, the question was, um, what type of gifts does the Holy Spirit give to us for others? Um, I would say, in a sense, all of them. Um, the one where we're, we're a human family, we're, we're a church, we're a body, and so when Christ gives maybe just gifts in my own life that work on my own redemption, my own conversion, uh, that is very much for myself, but it's also for the sake of my family, it's for the sake of, of my friends, it's for the sake of people I speak to. Um, as Christ is redeeming and bringing conversion about in your own life, it's also for my sake and for your family's sake, and we're a communal being. And so any gift that we're given, whether, again, that feels like an intimate personal gift, ultimately it's going to lead us to this, this idea of becoming more and more one in the body of Christ. Um, but it, I think about it in terms of love, like if you have the ability to love but no one to love, what good is love? 
right? I mean, if, if there's literally no one on earth for you to love, what good is your gift to love? Like love, in order for it to be love, needs an object to love. And, and the Holy Spirit, who is love himself, comes and dwells within us so that we can, he can love others through us in those different gifts, in our own conversion, in supernatural charismatic gifts, but also in the ability to love or forgive or just to see from a different perspective, to welcome someone who no one else maybe welcomes, something like that. Because love is for others. It's not for self. And the Holy Spirit gives us that love for others. Amen. I want to affirm that word. You know, I think uh, it's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, that says, you know, every gift that's given by the Spirit is given to a person for the benefit of another. There's something very much about the Holy Spirit, like, you know, like, we're not given the Holy Spirit so we can say, oh, I have my Holy Spirit and I special and God loves me. This is the proof I've been waiting for. You know, I mean, it's like we're given this gift so that we can turn around and give it to another person. It's a total pay it forward kind of thing. Whatever we're given, you know, somebody wrote, today I'm celebrating the anniversary of my confirmation 45 years ago. What an amazing, amazing thing to say that 45 years ago I was confirmed. And, and the question is, how can I thank God for all of these graces and all these things? I'm like, you can't. But that's why we have eternity. You have all of eternity to thank God for. What we need to do right now is make the most of every moment living it out and, and making sure whatever we've received, we're passing it on to another. And, you know, David talked about love, and I want to ask DJ to kind of comment on this after, but, you know, Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who he gave to us. You know, think about that. It's the Holy Spirit that pours the love of God into our hearts. I believe with, with every fiber of my being that the Holy Spirit is the game changer in the Christian walk. For those who are trying to do it under their own strength, they're constantly hitting these walls like, I've gone as far as I can and I can't overcome this. And it's right because we don't have the ability to overcome without the Holy Spirit. Like, I keep saying, um, you know, I'm seeking God's love and I want it and I want it. Why can't I have it? It's like, let the Holy Spirit more into your life because he is the great teacher. He, the first thing that he will teach us about is the nature of God's divine love. Not by giving us a lot of head knowledge, but by pouring it into our hearts so that it becomes a lived reality. And it says in the, once again, I love the catechism, so I'll go back to paragraph 221. It says, St. John goes even further when he affirms that God is love. God's very being is love. And by sending his only son in the spirit of love in the fullness of time, God has revealed his most innermost secret, his innermost secret of God, and, that's, and that is this, that God himself is an, an eternal exchange of love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and he has destined us to share in that exchange. Boom, drop mic, walk away, and you're like, destined to enter into the external, the, I'm sorry, the, I'm getting so excited, the eternal exchange of love between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's our destiny. Why are we? Why do we go to church with frowny faces and act like the frozen chosen? Our hearts should be rejoicing and on fire for the fact that we are called, and the Eucharist is one of those access points into that love. We get to see, you know, the, the, the embodiment, the incarnation of that love to feed our souls in the Eucharist, and it's the Holy Spirit that comes down during the Epiclesis when the prayer is prayed over the bread and wine that transforms it into this feast of love. What was once body, what was once bread and wine is now the body and blood of Jesus. And we're invited to feast there. And I mean like, how do I get more out of the mass? Ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten your heart as to what you're experiencing. It all comes back to are we letting the Holy Spirit in as much as we need to? Are we constantly saying, Holy Spirit, show me. Holy Spirit, be my best friend. Be be with me. Enlighten my eyes so that my eyes see more than just the flesh and the matter that's in front of me, but we see things with a spiritual sense. And when I started praying this way, I mean, like I'm telling you, everything in my life radically changed. And, and I can't help but tell people as we approach the Feast of Pentecost, if you feel like your tank is empty, if you feel like your faith is, you know, the, the needle of your soul is getting dangerously close to that E, there's a never-ending supply of grace that's already within you that needs to be stirred up and you can go to God and say, God, give me a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. And those two experiences combined will start the fire burning again, will get your engine running, will get you spiritually where, you, where your heart desires for you, for you to be. So, 
Um, go ahead. Uh, you know, you got uh, DJ. I want you, you know, to let you in on this. This is good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I wish I could add something that was just uh, so mind blowing that you, you and, and David didn't already say. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, David, I think your answer was absolutely on point in that everything that we're given is meant for others. You know, I, I, I can't see Jesus sitting with his 12 disciples and saying, hey, guys, just go home, relax, you know, don't worry about it. I'm going to touch everybody's heart. You just you just stay home and, and, and you know, read, read your scriptures. It'll be okay. No, right? He sends the 72, and he sends them out in twos, you know, whatever, two or three are gathered in your name, there I am in the midst. Um, you know, uh, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. I think over and over again, he calls us to communion. And I think what the beauty of the Holy Spirit is that it allows this community to be life-giving. And we, we talk so much in the church of, of, of being about life. And I don't think it's just, you know, I don't think it, it, to limit it to, from womb to tomb, I, I think I'd be limiting to what truly the Holy Spirit has for us. That it's not just the years that we're, our neurons are firing and our hearts are beating. It's, it's what life are we bringing to the world that we live in? You know, I think we can all agree that there's some people who, who they're living, but are they really living? And I think that's the beauty of this Holy Spirit. It allows us, and this Pentecost, it allows us to bring life everywhere we go in the communities that we are. So I think you were right on, David. I think John, your your the beauty of the scriptures that you shared. I mean, kudos, man! I was over here cheering y'all on. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite comments tonight is says, says uh, just for fun, David looks like Peter Parker from Spider Man. <laughs> okay, I don't want to get off topic. But my fifteen year old son, I think my fifteen year old son is aspiring to be when he grows up. Here's here's what he looks like. <laughs> He's way cooler than I could ever hope to be. <laughs> All right. Hey, um, I'll get back to some of these questions. You know, uh, yeah. so John, I, I saw one. Is it okay if I throw it out? Then, brother, go for it. For sure. Uh, one of them that kind of struck me was, uh, question was, how does uh, one discern that it is the Holy Spirit that's communicating? Uh, and I think in my own life, this is something I probably question or struggle with a lot and continue to struggle with. Um, and uh, maybe maybe two kind of different approaches to this. Um, Number one, if you feel the Holy Spirit's prompting you or speaking to you or calling you to do something, uh, kind of run it through a checklist. Number one, is it sinful? Just stop and think. And it may sound, sound stupid, but like I've been a youth minister for about 13 years, and I've encountered a lot of uh, usually well-meaning guys who find a very attractive girl and just, you know, well, God's calling me to be with Well, what is God calling you to do? Well, he just, he's stirring in my heart. Like, hold on, check yourself. Is what you think you're being called to do, is it sinful or not? And that could be in any situation because the Holy Spirit's not going to call you to sin. That's, he can't call you to sin. It's the opposite of who he is. It's the opposite of who he made you to be. So check that off the list. If, if God's calling you to leave the Catholic Church and start your own religion, that's probably not good. That, that's a sinful action to leave the fullness of the truth. He's not going to call you to do that. So run it through that gamut. And two, I would say um, kind of with that, ask yourself, does it lead you to holiness? Or does it lead someone else to holiness? Right? Is it, is it propelling you and your family towards holiness? Uh, is, is it doing something good for someone around you? You know, I pray that I win the lottery all the time. And, and I, yeah, I want to think it's the Holy Spirit telling me. But like the reality is like just the other day, I dropped my iPad and I, I literally like I cried. Like I was so angry and I had to go to confession for the kind of words that came to my mouth. And I was like, God, I'm so stupid. Like it's just an iPad. Like it's just a thing. And yet I'm so upset about it, you know. And so I think it, maybe it's not the Holy Spirit calling me to win the lottery, you know? Um, ask yourself those kind of things. I think to go a step further than that is seek counsel. If you have close friends who you know live a life of God, live a holy life, follow the church's teachings, talk to them about it. Ask them to pray with you about it. Ask God to confirm those, those things you, you're questioning within you. Uh, and even a step further, I would say um, get a spiritual director. Um, whether it's a priest or a religious or someone um, who you can really trust with, because God is going to confirm what he's calling you to do and what he's speaking to your heart. Um, 
And then the other way around, not, not a way around, but another approach, because sometimes in my own life, kind of like DJ was sharing, like those moments where you're like, oh man, is God calling me to talk to that person or to, to maybe ask for prayer or whatever? Um, a lot of times, like you just need to practice it. You know, if it's, if you feel God maybe nudging you to buy that person a meal, practice it, you know, step out. And a real, real quick story. I, um, I was coming out of the gym one day and in the shopping center, they're redoing some construction. And there was this, I was, I, I, I go running by and um, I was on my way running home and I was just praying like, well, Holy Spirit, I just want to be attentive to you. I want to know when you're speaking. And I ran by and there's this huge construction worker, like huge construction worker, big old guy, like tank top, huge, covered in tattoos and stuff. And uh, just, he was at work hard. And I, I ran by and I crossed his path and I just said, hey, how you doing? As I kept running. And I felt something in my heart, like, no, that's not enough. He's like, and he's like, what, what is that? You know, and I kind of asked myself, is this the Holy Spirit? And I felt kind of, hey, go talk to him. I was like, no, you go talk to him. You know what I mean? Like, hmm. No, no, just go talk to him. You asked to be kind of open. Maybe this is it. And so I took a step out and I went back and I said, hey, this probably is stupid um, because it sounds stupid to me. But is there anything I can pray for you for? And this big old guy covered in sweat and dust, his posture changed. And he looked at me and he's holding back tears. And he said, my mom is incredibly sick. And this morning I asked God if he would send someone to pray with me. And, and honestly, like, I get goosebumps saying that, but, but I got so excited. I was, in my, I was like, it worked. It worked. I thought I had this, this nudge, this urging. It worked. And I looked at him, and I got, I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I took off running. I was like, whoa, hold on. Turned around, came back, and I actually prayed with him for him and his mom. And his name was Miguel. Please pray for him and his mom. I, I don't know what came of that. But, but like, you got to step out. If I never would have risked feeling like a fool, feeling like, like an idiot or being ridiculed, I never would have known that actually that was the Holy Spirit prompting me because I never gave him a chance to show me that it was him. There's been other times where I've asked people, hey, can I pray with you? No. Okay, clearly, you know, and I'll move on and I'll pray for that person. But take a risk, step out, practice it. The more you practice it, the more you kind of take a chance if that was God, the more you're actually going to start to hear what God's voice sounds like. The more you're going to recognize that tone of the Holy Spirit speaking to you. It's not going to happen instantly. Practice it. Two thoughts on uh, discerning the Holy Spirit. That's what I got. Sorry for rambling. Back to you, John, in the studios. <laughs> Thanks. I, um, I want to kind of step back, you know, because I think uh, I don't want to give anyone the misperception of kind of what I was getting at and what I was sharing about what the Holy Spirit can do in our, our lives and helping us overcome fears and anxieties. Um, you know, it is true uh, that a good number of people do suffer from legitimate mental health disorders and that panic attacks, depression, uh, anxiety, and that kind of stuff. A lot of that can be brought on by chemical uh, imbalances and also uh, might need more than just a, a prayer to the Holy Spirit. They, they may be constantly needed. Um, this is things that I've experienced in my own family. Uh, you know, so I, don't, I, I, I didn't want to give anyone the impression you know, that, you know, yeah, sometimes God might do a miracle and free somebody from that in a miraculous way, but most of the time that God chooses to heal is through the ordinary. And he does that because we need to be we need to grow in patience and perseverance. You know, right before Christmas this year, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. We had just celebrated uh, 25 years of marriage this past summer. And to, to kind of like after 25 years, and it seems like all of a sudden like my wife has breast cancer, and it's a very aggressive kind, and she's going through chemotherapy right now. And I pray every day for her. And I mean, if I would have if I would have said to God, heal my wife and pray to her, Lord, heal my wife and laid hands on her, and all of a sudden she went back to the doctor the next day and said, um, you know, I'm healed, I'm cancer free, they can't find it anymore. I would I would probably have a pretty good story to tell. I'd be dancing around and excited and whooping and hollering and just praising God like crazy. But I would not have had the ability to die to myself over and over again in the last few months to love my wife and waste them. This, this, this illness has given me the ability to do, to learn a deeper compassion after 25 years of marriage. I don't think we can understand the mind of God. And I'm not, I, I don't discount miracles. God does miracles every day. But I feel like what he's doing in, in making me more compassionate and changing my heart towards my wife and, and drawing me into a deeper love, 
a more sacrificial love is just as miraculous as, and beautiful as a miracle can be. I see God in it. I see God so clearly. I see the Holy Spirit working so profoundly that, you know, it's almost like, you know, the easy way out would have been a miracle. But I'm walking a harder path. But I'm finding with every step I take, even the next step, it's so challenging. And watching my wife suffer and being incapable of helping her, just to be there with, to love her, it, it is something that, I, you know, I, I can't explain it. Uh, you know, I mean, I still pray, God, give her complete healing and let the, everything that we're going through, and all the chemo and all the radiation she has waiting for her at the end of chemo and then the next phase, let it all lead to her healing and let us enjoy many years of cancer-free life and, and memories and joy and happiness. But until we get there, Lord, let me not think about myself. Let me not think less of myself. Just let me think of myself a lot less. You know, let me think of my wife more. And let me think about how to love her, you know, and not, so, and not be so kind of caught up in anything of, of selfishness that I might have. You know, if you want a, a, a healing from God, you know, and you're, you're, you're praying for that, you know, people always want to say, when miracles happen, let's give God the glory. And if something bad, well, you know, Let's not let's just say, well, that's just that just happened. You know, God is in charge of everything. And you know, he doesn't sit there and say, Okay, here's the faith meter. Once your faith gets to that level, you're you're done enough faith for a miracle. Ding 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 ding. You know, it is not about that. Because God wants to be, like I said, in communion with you. He wants you to draw you, he wants to draw you in the life of love. He wants to, and, 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 and the, the, the path for Christ, once he came on his mission, okay, to enter back into heaven before the ascension, before the resurrection, it was the cross. You know, we can't, we can't leapfrog the cross in order to get to heaven ourselves. But it's the same spirit that gave Christ the, the, the ability to rise three times as he fell under the weight of the cross that will give us the ability to rise when we fall. It's the same spirit that gave Christ the joy to see beyond his cross, to see the salvation of the world that will give us the joy to persevere through those things that seem to wound us and hold us down. And that's as miraculous and beautiful and awesome to, to, to live through than actually seeing a bona fide by oil definition of a miracle. Like, you know, there's no other explanation for a miraculous human. And I've seen it. I've seen them in my life. I've seen God, uh, you know, through the, the intercession of Blessed Mother Teresa. I've seen, you know, I've seen these miracles happen. And through praying, uh, laying on of hands. And now we don't have enough time for me to get into my family. I can tell you that miracles happen. But they're not, you know, the greatest, the greatest gift is not, you know, to rely on miracles, but to, to, to enter into communion with God. And we can do that through our suffering in ways that nothing else can draw us into. And that's if we have, if we have the Holy Spirit, because he's the one that can lead us through all that. He's the one that can guide us. We, we're so in need of it. We're so desperate for his, his working in our life. I don't think we understand how desperately we need the Holy Spirit every moment of every day to keep us right with God and to keep us on that path. David, any other questions that are jumping off the page? DJ, you got anything that you see that you want to talk to? Um, actually, I can't see any questions, so <laughs> I'm relying on you to kind of log it. That's right, that's right. Um, just one, one quick question. It says, uh, how can I help someone realize what you're saying is true? Um, and I think, um, well, how, how do you know when a restaurant has really good food. It's probably busy, right? It's probably packed. It's probably lined out the door. Someone probably told you about it, right? How do you know when, um, I don't know, a new exercise or a new CrossFit program is, is really effective? Probably see someone who got in amazing shape or really lost a lot of weight, built some muscle. And uh, I think the reality is to, the greatest way to convince other people that what we're talking about is true is, is you. Uh, you living it. Like you, you seeking the Holy Spirit when you're good or when you're bad, when you're holy, when you're sinful, whatever, you seeking the Holy Spirit when you're, when you're struggling, you are going to be the greatest convincer uh, that this is true, that this isn't a fairy tale, that this isn't a bunch of made up philosophy, but that the Holy Spirit is a person, he's living in you. You 
changing your sinful habits. I'm sorry, back it up. You allowing the Holy Spirit to bring you change through your sinful habits, you surrendering to him. The Holy Spirit affecting your life through prayer and through putting mass as a priority or reconciliation as a priority. You're going to be the greatest convincer to the people around you. Uh, you're the saint the world needs to see, and the Holy Spirit desires to make you that saint. Same for me, same for you. We're getting, wrap, we're getting ready to wrap up here. You know, On the topic of the Holy Spirit, DJ, do you have any uh, kind of parting thoughts that you want to share with anyone? Oh, man, none that we could fit onto this webinar. <laughs> I would go on for days and days, but... Um, you know, I, 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 I think as far as being Holy Spirited evangelizers and just allowing the Holy Spirit to change our lives <clears throat> and to change everyone else's around us, um, you know, I, I'll be honest. I, I, I got, I got tired of, I, I got tired of, of being so sheepish. I got tired of, of saying, well, I believe in you, God, but I, I don't believe I can, I can do your work. And I know that everybody listening right now, uh, there's some sort of desire. That there's a reason that you're on this conference, that there's this webinar right now. And the Lord is, uh, and I hope that before this even, even happened, you opened your heart because the Lord is planting seeds right now. And they're seeds of greatness. They're, they're seeds of change. There's seeds of season. We don't need to be in winter all the time. Go out there. It's summertime, baby. We need to be out there with the birds and the bees and, and spreading what the love is and, and what it means to us. And I think with, if you let the Holy Spirit do that, it's not people that, that deny you. It's not people that, that get mad at you. They, they deny you because they first denied him. So don't let, you know, your, your personal feelings, um, your, your personal, you know, needs of, of, of praises, because that's something that had me for a long time. Don't let that control your life. Let the love of the Lord and the Holy Spirit control everything that you do. And, and with this, the, it's so funny the way that the, the devil works. I love um, the way Jesse Duplantis says this. But he says, you need to doubt the doubt. Because when, when the, the devil comes into your head and says, I doubt that you, you know, when you pray for that person, they're just going to laugh at you. I doubt you can do that. Then you need to say, you know what, devil? I doubt your doubt. And the devil's like, oh, what did you just do? You just doubted my doubt? And you're like, yeah, I just doubted the doubt. Because once you doubt the doubt, you don't have to be in doubt about the doubt. You just doubted the doubt. Okay? So <laughs> I guess I'm trying to get at it. Doubt the doubt. Be in love with the Lord and the Holy Spirit will transform you and transform the people that you. God bless. I love you, Jesus Christ. Yeah, great. Um, David, do you have any parting, any other parting thoughts you want to share? Uh, just, I mean, <clears throat> the one thing that's driving me is just that Father Contolo Mesa quote: "Don't be content with anything less than a new Pentecost. Don't, don't settle. The Holy Spirit is always advancing. He's always on the move." He may have done something previously, but it doesn't mean he stopped. Don't be settled. Complacency is the enemy of the Holy Spirit. Mediocrity is, is the enemy of the greatness that the Holy Spirit wants to unleash in our lives. So don't settle. Don't be content. Press in. Pray. Be, be annoying in your prayer, asking the good Father to send the good gifts of the Holy Spirit, of his love. Uh, and he will be faithful to do it in, in his way. Um, and uh, lastly, kind of selfishly, but... Uh, I just want to add, say hi and ask you to pray for my little nine-month-old godson, Benjamin, who's listening right now with his awesome dad, Francis Cabildo. Thank you, Benjamin. You're awesome. 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 And I'll, and I'll just wrap up by saying, you know, once again, the Holy Spirit comes to us as the spirit of love. And wherever there is love, the love drives away fear. Love drives away doubt. You know, and, 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 and maybe the anxieties and things we struggle with, you know, they might never leave, uh, leave us in this life, but they'll drive it away from our hearts where we will make our decisions. You know, we might always have a wound that leaves us, you know, not everything gets healed in life. Some things are not healed until heaven. 
And the Holy Spirit will not let those wounds hold us back from becoming the people God intended us to be. This is all about saying, come Holy Spirit, the three most beautiful, if not dangerous words that you could possibly pray in your life because you're inviting the power of God's love to come into your heart and have his way. But when we do that, he comes to us like, like the master sculptor. The story of Michelangelo who found this misshapen lump of marble tucked away in the corner of this old um, warehouse. And after examining it for a couple of days, said, this is what I'm going to create my next beautiful statue out of. And after working on it for a few months, what was left was the statue of David. This beautiful, perfectly formed in this white, beautiful marble. This beautiful sculpture. And when people said, how did you know that that, that statue was contained in this misshapen, discarded lump of marble. He said, look, all I did was look at it and I saw David in there and I knew all I had to do was to take away every part of the rock that wasn't David until all that remained was what that rock was created to be. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He comes into our hearts and he removes all those things takes away all those things that are of God so that nothing remains but that which is of God and we become the saints and the holy disciples that he created us to be, that the church desires us to be, and that the church needs us to be today, right now. So with that, um, David, if people want to learn more about you and your ministry, where would you direct them? Uh, well, first and foremost, my uh, my day job is with Life Teen International. So at lifeteen.com, um, we have an awesome team there. And so uh, I do the graphics uh, with an awesome team of designers for, uh, for Life Teen. Uh, and personally, uh, you can go to holdfasthope.com, which is uh, being updated. So you'll find my email address there. Uh, but other than that, on Twitter and Instagram, it's at David Cal. And that's Cal as in Calavita, not Cal as in Moo. Cal, David Cal, C-A-L. Um, other than that, that's about it. Great. Great. And DJ, if people want to learn more about you and your ministry, where would you, where would you direct them? Uh, absolutely. I started a ministry a couple of years ago, and uh, you can go check it out at www.djbernal. <laughs> big big surprise, right? djbernal.com, and um, you can get uh, all my information. You can see some other videos the different things that my ministry provides for uh, traveling ministry and going to different places. So um, thank you all. I'd love to, love to be, love to see you all again. <laughs> Excellent. And for me, uh, you know, the email that you had received um, you know, for the invite to this webinar, you know, that's my work email here at the university. Um, I'll be speaking this summer uh, at our Power and Purpose Conference, which is a conference to help to help Catholics learn more about the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'll actually be running um, a Life in the Spirit track for those who may want to learn more. So if you want to learn more about that conference, there's also great speakers like Dr. Ralph Martin, some other spiritual giants, heroes of mine that I'll be on the ministry team with. And you can learn all more about that at studentoconferences.com. Um, I also uh, am going to be launching a ministry within the next few months called Metagrace, which just means transform the grace that helps us overcome, you know, and how do we live the Catholic life. And I'm available for parish missions, retreats, and other events where people are interested in learning more about how to invite the Holy Spirit in their lives in a deeper way to experience more of God's love and transforming power. Um, you can email me about that directly if you have any uh, questions about uh, you know, bringing me in. I'm doing it on a limited basis. One of my wife's undergoing her chemotherapy, but still uh, available for a, a few limited uh, Dates. So if, if that's something that you're interested in, having something you perish to help people grow in the Holy Spirit, I'd be glad to serve in that capacity. Um, let us close in a prayer. Uh, hey, John. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but would it be all right if maybe we just prayed for you and your wife just as a collective group here? Sure. Sure. Okay. I'm, I'll okay. start. And if you want to jump in with another session from my wife, that'd be beautiful. I'm sorry. Remind me your wife's name, please. Lisa. Lisa. Please. All right. Thank you. So let's start in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So God and the Holy Spirit have been stuck there. <laughs> ah, good and gracious God, we thank you that in your time and in the history of the church, you sent forth your Holy Spirit 
to draw us into communion with you, our God, who exists as a family of love. May we as Catholics on the earth right now be filled with your Holy Spirit and brought into a deeper encounter with your love and your sanctifying grace. Come, Holy Spirit, be our interior master. We submit to your direction, your guidance, your sanctifying grace. Come, Holy Spirit, and be the light that we need to see ourselves correctly. Show us our sin that we might repent correctly. Show us what you're doing in our lives that we might cooperate. Show us the path that we should walk on so that we can follow you faithfully. Holy Spirit, work in our lives to take away any desire, any affection, any feeling that is disordered and not of you. We want to be purified, and so we submit to the fire of your love. And let that healing fire, that cleansing fire, purify our minds, our hearts, and our souls, that we would be made into perfect vessels of the love that is ours through Christ Jesus. I pray for everyone on this webinar, Lord. Fulfill the desires of their hearts through the power of your Holy Spirit. Transform the parts of their lives that need transformation. Conform the parts of their hearts that are not conformed to your will, to that, to that same perfect will that you have through the power of your Holy Spirit. Inflame them with a deeper love for you and for one another, that we could be living witnesses of your goodness and glory here on this earth. We trust in you, Holy Spirit, to be our interior master, and we ask, have your way. Jesus, we thank you for your death on the cross and for sending us the Holy Spirit. May our union with the Holy Spirit draw us into deeper communion with you. And Father God, who out of the kindness and goodness and mercy of your heart created us and gave us life, draws us into your perfect love for the Spirit, we just turn to you and give you all the glory and honor and praise that's due your holy name. And may we live lives worthy of the Trinity and the love that you've shown us. Lord Jesus, I uh, thank you for, uh, first of all, thank you for John for his uh, heart and leadership through these webinars and uh, just the, the courage to share with us. Um, I thank you for the holiness and the love that you have placed in him for his wife. I thank you for that example um, as a man, as a husband, as a father. And Lord, we lift up to you uh, this hardship for him and Lisa. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would just so tangibly seep into the depths of their heart seep into the pain and the questions and the struggles. And Lord, in only the way that you can, that you would bring life and grace and redemption and healing out of this. Lord, we call down your power. We call down your healing. We call down your, your wisdom, Lord, that it would come into this present, that it would come upon Lisa. And Holy Spirit, that you would heal her in every level that you know she needs healed that you would bring about just a greater receptivity of your Holy Spirit in their lives, a greater awareness of the power that you've given them through this suffering. And as they suffer with Christ, they would experience the resurrective love of Christ in this moment. Mother Mary, please pray for this family. Pray for healing, for grace. And most of all, just pray for a closeness to your son. As we pray, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed Amen. art thou amongst women, and blessed Amen. is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Bene Sante Spiritus, may you guys have a blessed and holy Pentecost. Thank you once again for being a part of this. Uh, it'll be up on our website, stubbillfield.com, in the next few days. Feel free to share it, invite other people to watch it. And um, before you sign off, if you want to add any other ideas that you would have for um, future webinars and other topics regarding the Holy Spirit that you'd like to see more webinars on, type them in now. We'd be glad to serve you. We love you. God bless you. And uh, be assured of our prayers uh, as you go forth. God bless.